We sing it at school, at important ceremonies, and even before sporting events. Our national anthem has a proud history, and it all began right here in Baltimore Harbor two centuries ago. This is the War of 1812. We weren't doing so well. The Americans were losing at that time. And the British had just burned Washington. That was kind of scaring the people in Baltimore City. And Fort McHenry was the only thing standing in between the British ships and Baltimore City. The American general in charge of the fort wanted to show the British that we weren't afraid. So he sent word here to the home of Mary Pickerskill. Mary was a well-known flag maker. So Mary, what did the general ask you to do? Why, well, he asked me to make a flag that was so large the British would have no trouble seeing it from a distance. It was um, 30 by 42 feet. Each stripe was two feet wide and every star was two feet from tip to tip. Wow, that sounds really big. It was very large. The largest flag to ever fly from a flagpole, as I understand. To give you an idea of just how big the flag really is, it was this big. When did the battle begin? On September 13th, 1814, the British began firing on the fort. We are at the fort's water battery. This is the main line of defense for Fort McHenry. Cannons like these are what kept the British ships at bay. An American lawyer happened to be with the British ships. He was negotiating the release of a prisoner, an American prisoner of war. And so he was there for the whole bombardment and he saw the entire battle. And his name was Francis Scott Key. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. Why did Key write that first line? Oh, say can you see, Key wasn't sure who won the fight. It was dark the morning after the battle. He's looking through a spyglass, and then he sees the giant American flag going over the fort and realizes that the Americans held out, the Americans won, and that inspired him to write the poem the defense of Fort McHenry. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. When Francis Scott Key wrote his poem, there were only 15 stars and 15 stripes on the American flag. Or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. So what exactly are the ramparts? The ramparts are the brick walls surrounding the fort. And ramparts is another name for a wall. So when Key says, or the ramparts, or is another word for over, so he's saying, we watched over the ramparts for the flag. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. During the battle, a bomb crashed straight through the roof of our powder magazine. If it had actually exploded, it would have blown the fort sky high. He proved through the night that our flag was still there. The British bombarded the fort for 25 hours, and they were out by Key Bridge, so they were two miles out on the water. Our guns could only shoot for a mile and a half, so they were out of our range. So after 25 hours of bombing, they were not defeating the fort, and they weren't getting to Baltimore, so the British decided to leave. What happened to Key's poem? Well, Key went back to Baltimore, wrote the rest of the poem, and then he gave it to a local printer, and it was printed on handbills. It was an overnight sensation. To put it in modern terms, it went viral. It went up and down the Atlantic coast, and two weeks later, a music store, Cars Music Store, changed the name from the defense of Fort McHenry to the Star Spangled Banner. When did it become our national anthem? It became the official national anthem in 1931. For a lot of years, it was sung like a national anthem. They called it a national air, but it really wasn't until the 1920s that a grassroots mo movement came afoot to make it official, and Herbert Hoover signed it into uh, a resolution in public law in 1931. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Yes, it does. 200 years later, our flag still proudly waves, spangled with a lot more stars. For TKN, I'm Carly.